Bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue. Hello ladies and gentlemen and everyone else out there watching. Thank you for tuning in to Dave Listens to Hi-Fi. So today I'm going to talk about two DACs. I've got a DAC from the USA made a very long time ago and a DAC from China made very recently. So how much progress have we made in 24 years of digital audio? Let's find out. So today we've got the SMSL D400EX. Uh, which is, uses uh, AKM uh, DAC chips, uh, brand new, and we've got the MSB Link DAC, which was a product from 1999 from the US. Um, let's dive into what's inside, what they're made of, and then I'll talk about uh, the sound signatures. Um, if you check in the description below, I'll put uh, timestamps for the different uh, sections here, so if you want to skip right to uh, the sound conclusions, you can do that as well. The D400EX that I have was generously lent to me by my audio buddy Thomas from Thomas and & Stereo and he in turn received it from Hi-Fi Express, HiFiExpress.com. I'll put the link in the description below. So on their website they have a bunch of SMSL and other brands, uh, DAX, amps. I saw that they do have a section where they have uh, used and cosmetically damaged products that are presumably otherwise functional and uh, really good deals to be had on that section so I found that especially interesting because uh, I like to get a good deal. Uh, Hi-Fi Express, if they used a hot air balloon in their marketing I imagine it would look something like this. So the D400EX retails on the site for 1277 Canadian, about 960 euros. Uh, physically it's about um, the size of a collection of children's stories, kind of a compact uh, desktop unit that a lot of DACs are these days. Uh, the weight, it's uh, fairly substantial, about the same as two jars of uh, sliced peaches. Um, on the front you'll see there are three buttons. There's a power button on top, the kind of in the middle, a little bit of an odd position for the power button. Um, selector buttons below that, and there's a rotary encoder, and then a, a color screen. Uh, the rotary knob is for volume for moving up and down menu items. Um, it's flush with the front panel. It's actually kind of not completely fresh, flush with the front panel. Um, uh, build quality was uh, surprisingly not perfect. Um, and that knob was a little bit tough to turn. It's, it's winter here, air is dry, and I, I found it hard to get, to get enough grip on the knob. I had to wet my finger just to get enough grip so I could turn it, but it does come with a remote, so you can always use the remote to change the volume and, and move through the menu items like that. Uh, plug it into the wall, it takes about 4.6 watts, so pretty economical, no problem to, to plug it in and leave it powered and running all the time. It uses the AK um, 4499EX and 4191 uh, chips. The 4191 I believe is a decoder chip and then the other ones are the DA converter chips. It actually uses two of them uh, and separating the DA conversion from the processing uh, I believe gives the ability to um, run lower distortion, better signal to noise, higher resolution, all, all the knock-on effects there. And separate regulated uh, power supplies for the dif different sections. Uh, it'll do uh, PCM32768, uh, DSD512, MQA, uh, it's got optical, coax, uh, AES, uh, I2S, um, uh, USB inputs. Uh, I used mostly the coax and the USB input. The USB, I had, uh, I had some older laptops that really had trouble. They, they wouldn't load the drivers from the SMSL website. Uh, just my newer laptop would do that. Uh, when running MQA on Tidal, I had a couple songs where the playback just paused a little bit. Uh, I've read online that that's happened to some other people. I'm not sure if it's a you know, streaming, uh, if I don't have the bandwidth to do it. The speed of my network is not fast enough to do the, the full MQA or if it's something inherent in, in the drivers or the processing, but I, I did notice that a little bit. Absolutely no problem using uh, coax from my, uh, from my streamer or from my uh, CD transport. It's high res certified and um, it's got the little heat sinks on the side, kind of thin sections. I'm not sure if that's really necessary. It doesn't get overly warm, uh, kind of the whole case seems to get warm, um, but it looks pretty cool. I, I like the way it looks. 
So the MSB Link DAC. Uh, MSB, if you want to buy a MSB DAC today, you're going to spend a minimum $15,000 up until, you know, double the price of a 2023 Corvette. Um, but back in 99, MSB came out with the Link DAC for $349 US dollars, which is about $630 in, in today's money. Um, they had been around for about 15 years at that point, doing mods on CD players and, and otherwise working in digital audio, so they had plenty of expertise on, on how to do it right. The separate DA converter was a bit of a novel item at that point. Uh, usually if you wanted better sound, you bought a better CD player. Uh, the idea of a separate DA converter was emerging and would become very popular afterwards. Uh, so in 99 they came out with the Link DAC. Um, then there was quickly followed by Link DAC 2 and 3, and then there was a Nelson Pass upgrade, and there was a separate power supply. So within a few short years you could be spending $1,500 on a basically an upgraded version of the Link DAC. So um, it, it was a good platform for them to to start to grow and uh, provide uh, more premium products. Um, so if you look at the Link DAC itself, it's about the size of a large pizza. It's very heavy, made from a steel chassis, uh, painted in a metallic uh, paint. Um, it's heavier than the SMSL. Uh, if you want to find the equivalent weight, it, you have to pull out most of my uh, fine, finest china and uh, get a good stack together to, to get the equiv equivalent weight of the Link DAC. Opening it up, you can see inside the board does not take up the full uh, internal volume of the uh, of the link DAC. Uh, instead, they filled the rest of it with marketing. Um, there's a good label in there showing all the product features, a little block diagram of the uh, the DAC itself. Even on the board, you can see the little marketing slogans, uh, features of the uh, the technologies used uh, by MSB. Um, little shout outs for themselves. The back panel has inputs for coax SPDIF and uh, Toslink, has analog outputs, RCA single-ended, it also has analog inputs. So what that does is when there's no digital signal there's a relay inside and it switches to the analog inputs. So this way when you add an external DAC to your system you're not taking up an extra input on your preamp because this can supplement that. On the front, power button, and then different LEDs to show uh, the sampling rate uh, currently being processed. So now this is what it's all about, the sound. What does it sound like comparing super old product to the brand new high-tech product? So I bought the Link DAC about a week before I got the SMSL. Uh, I got fairly familiar with the sound of the Link DAC, and then I plugged in the SMSL and started A being the first couple tracks and I thought wow they're pretty close <laughs> that was I was kind of surprised I was like ah they, they, there should be a bigger difference um you know I, I was I was expecting to hear a bigger change but uh, honestly A being the first couple tracks it was like hmm they're different but I can't really say one's a whole lot better than the other. And this kind of brings me to the point of A-B comparisons. Um, you know, like with the way our, our vision has evolved, you know, we can see everything that's in front of us, but the things we're going to notice are the movements, the changes in, in what's there. I mean, that's that's why a lot of optical illusions are based upon, um, you know, we see changes, we see differences. Um, and I think with hearing, when we A-B things, if there's not a little a lot of really obvious differences, the things are going to seem kind of close, which which is you know some of the fault in, in quick A B comparisons. When you put it in and you start to listen to things, I know our aud auditory memory is pretty short, but when you listen to something and you you really get a sense of the character of the sound, you know, instrument placement. Um, and you can really kind of make a mental description of the sound of different instruments and different things in the, the presentation, that is the impression that, that stays with you. And then you put something else in, 
after listening to it a while, that's when you can really tease out the differences. So initial A-B comparisons, SMSL was better, but they were close enough that it really made me doubt that this was a, going to be a very interesting comparison. Upon longer listening, you really got a better sense, bigger variety of recordings, you got a better sense of what the differences were between the two. So if I was to characterize the SMSL, it really sounds great. Uh, it has great instrument layering. Um, it has a wonderful instrument separation. Uh, it has clean, clear, deep bass with texture. Um, very smooth, detailed, high end. Uh, very quiet. I mean, the, the, the instruments really come from quite a dark background and uh, that almost gives a sense of, of greater dynamics because things seem to emerge so so much. In comparison, the Link DAC, it's a warmer presentation, slightly out of focus, or kind of like everything's wearing flannel, it's a little softer. Um, but still, it, it surprised me with the, the high-end detail that it could do, um, and it did have a bit of a, a forward mid-range. It did have a bit of a pronounced mid-range which didn't sound shouty but on the other hand it seemed to bring out a lot of that mid-range detail um, when I first got it uh, the first couple of nights that I had it I was up until 3 a.m. just rediscovering all of my music because it, it did present such an easy to listen to sound that really emphasized a lot of detail and you start to hear things you didn't hear before because of that uh, little bit of a prominent uh, mid-range so Blues March Art Blakey this is one of the first tracks that I used to, to compare the two. Um, on the SMSL, it was very quick, uh, very sharp transients. Um, you could hear the, the details, the double taps on the, on the snares. Um, it had a really nice and layered uh, instrument separation presentation. Uh, it was a little bit recessed, but that recessed kind of background seemed to just give more room for the dynamics to expand. It was as if everyone kind of spread out a bit to, to give more room uh, to the separation of the instruments and, and more room for the, the music to really jump forth. So it was very dynamic as well. The uh, MSB Link DAC was less precise in the location of instruments. It was a more forward presentation um, it didn't emphasize the sharpness in the attacks, but it did have a, a bit of a warmth that uh, emphasized the toms and, and the, the mid-range presentation did uh, kind of make the piano pop, but it, it was certainly less dynamic and, and a lot less uh, detailed. Uh, David Bowie's last album, uh, listening to the track Lazarus uh, from Black Star, um, there's, there's a good kick drum in there and it was very intense. It was uh, not overly warm or round, but it really gave the character of the drum and it really kicked quite well. The bass guitar was deep and defined, um, you know, not the most powerful of, of low bass that I've heard from digital, but every bit as deep and uh, defined and quick through, through, through the bass. Um, the high end sparkled uh, and the presentation had enough dynamics and, and layering that it, you know, you could really pick out all the different sounds and different instruments, and the emotion in uh, David Bowie's voice really came through. It, it was uh, it was chilling. You, you just the, the detail just really brought out a lot of the character and a lot of the emotion in that song. With the MSB listening to Lazarus, uh, the sound stage was wider. Details were less precise. Uh, but it did give a nice warmth to, to the presentation and still had some details. Uh, the the mid-range details really popped, but it didn't have that same sense of immediacy um, and that same connection with the emotion uh, in the voice. Next I listened to uh, Come and Get It from Selena Gomez. Uh, with the SMSL, it was very powerful sounding, very dynamic. Uh, tonally, it was very even from top to bottom. Um, Interestingly, all the, the detail and all the separate sounds in the song seem to have their own ambiance, so you can actually hear, you know, each little piece of the song, you could hear where it was recorded, and it really gave a, an interesting uh, version of the song. It was very engaging. Um, with the MSB, 
it was a little bit warmer, a little bit fuzzier, more of a wall of sound presentation uh, that was still very dynamic and fun to listen to, but it, it did lose uh, all the, the kind of those fine details that was present with the D400EX. Uh, the next song that I put on that uh, kind of surprised me, I, I didn't think I would have the, this big uh, a revelation with it, uh, I put on the Cult Wildflower. And let me tell you, the, initially with the MSB, it's a great song. I enjoyed it. It sounded really nice. Uh, you, you tell the, the, the recording wasn't the best recording. Uh, but then when I put on the SMSL, uh, wow, that song kicked. I mean, it just, uh, there, there's a crunch to the guitar and, and a fast start and stop that, that was really emphasized with the D400EX. Uh, you could hear the, the double tracking in the vocals and, and just... The song just came alive. It just kicked with the uh, with the SMSL. So uh, this is one of the biggest differences I noticed on on uh, Wildflower. Um, it was it was interesting. It was fun to listen to uh, with the uh, MSB DAC, but with the SMSL, it, wow! I mean that song just really kicked. It was uh, it was a fun to to listen to. Next, I put on Bill Evans' Autumn Leaves. I really love his uh, his version of that song. Um, so this, this was another recording that really did emphasize the, the differences between the two. Um, with the MSB, it was very pleasant to listen to, very warm and very engaging. Still, still sounded detailed and you could really follow along with the, the improvisation and, and uh, the, the way that they were uh, interpreting the song. It was, it was quite nice to listen to. With the SMSL, you could really hear the, uh, the the quality of the recording. You could hear all the higher uh, harmonics of the, the piano hits, um, and the, the bass had real wood to it. So um, just the, that extra detail uh, really made the song sound more real, and um, it was easier to engage with the song because it really sounded like real instruments. Uh, so that, that was. A big difference in between the two DACs. So uh, with the SMSL I also did try it in the preamp mode so bypassing my Dodge 8 uh, and plugging the D400EX directly into my power amp with the balanced cables um, and controlling the volume with the uh, SMSL. Uh, it was very clean, very detailed, uh, very quiet presentation but because I'm using the Dodge um, 8 tube preamp, there was an element uh, that the tubes give that kind of uh, warmth and ambience and um, extra 3D palpability to the music that, that I really enjoy. I mean, whether it's real or not, it just really adds to the music and adds to my enjoyment. So I, I like listening to it on the Dodge 8. You know, for those who like that clean, um, very neutral and detailed presentation, that's certainly an option for you. So there you have it. That is the difference that I found between the modern DAC and the 24-year-old DAC. I hope this was uh, enjoyable for you to watch. I hope it answered all your questions. If you have any other questions or any comments to make on the SMSL, the MSB, or any other DACs in general, please leave a comment below. I will read all the comments and uh, do my best to reply to each and every one of you. Thanks again for watching. Join me on Patreon, uh, that'll help me to access more equipment to bring you more reviews like this. Um, again, this is Dave Listens to Hi-Fi, take care.